back for a fourth day. I'm not exactly sure why. <laughs> my favorite place is downstairs, so that's where I'm going to spend most of my time. See what we can see. All right, this I want. This is an autonomous car kit. Okay, tell me about this. Okay, so essentially we have a kit that is available for individuals who are really interested in building their own autonomous vehicle. So not only do you design the exterior of the car, but you have to do the electrical work that goes into the car and even code and program the software yourself. And what's really neat is that you can even switch out the modules within the car so you can vary the degree of complexity and make it as hard or as easy as you'd like. Right now the software, for example, is running on Adreno, but you're more than welcome to change it to Raspberry Pi, whatever you really like. The price point for these is going to be? It's going to be about 200 for basic startup, but as it gets more complex, there'll be a cap of about 400 And you can actually see it, um, sensors that work over here on the screen. So I'm going to put my hand under the line tracing technologies, and you can see the purple bars on the um, upper right-hand corner show up. And this is how the wheels end up being steered. So if I just move my hand, you can see the bars move. It's a total coincidence that it's shaped just like the Cybertruck. <laughs> no, I have to have one of these. I really do. Okay, this is Japan Tech, and it is a motorized workout machine. It gives you voice commands, tells you what to do. So you kind of calibrate it before the workout. You tell it where the bottom position is, where the top position is. So it gives you resistance when you're pushing up, and then it pushes you down, and it pushes down hard. It can't go too low, so it's never going to crush you. And then it gives you your performance, and you can track it over time. Higa Trek, H-I-G-A Trek, $30,000 is all. That thing's awesome. All right, this is a small company. They designed a chip themselves to do this computer vision stuff, and they've got this box here that will take 16 different inputs. You can see the output here, but it's totally inaccurate because it says handsome man. <laughs> 1500 bucks for one that'll recognize a bunch of images. He said he's got 90 objects in there, but you can add more yourself. There's a lot of this going on. I could not possibly highlight everybody who has some sort of computer vision display here. There are a ton. I think of all the things that there are here, there are more computer vision displays than anything else. Right. So what we have here is a uh, water well stop, which is yeah, easy to install without any cutting off the pipes. You need no plumber, you need no installer. You put it on top of your well, tighten those clamps, and within 10 seconds, you have installed the yeah, water well stop to your home system. And now you can control it via Z-Wave or LoRa to shut off your water system. So if there's any leak, it will shut off the water supply. So this is the leakage detector we use. Okay. Um, you can flip it however you want. There will always be two contacts on the bottom. And oh. one of those like, contacts need to contact, get in contact with water. And then... And you said 199 you're selling those for? Yes, 199. Do you get the leak detector with it? In a package it will be 229 okay. with the leak detector and each leak detector costs um, 39. Okay. Yeah. And how does the leak detector communicate? Is that Z? -Wave? Right now this is LoRa. This it's LoRa. Yeah, this um, example we're using here is LoRa. But um, here's the Z-Wave version, so we have exactly the same application with Z-Wave. What's the, what's the company? Coast, Costos? Yes. Okay. And uh, we were coming to market beginning of Q2. Okay. That's when it will be available. Very good. Right. Thanks a lot. You're welcome. Hello. Uh, this is technology from a company uh, named Priority Innovation. We create a floating image. And so, simply, we have a LCD uh, here providing a light source. It's reflecting light through a very special mirror. In this mirror, there are thousands of little dots. It's this very special structure here. And when light shines through this structure two times and back into the eye, you're able to see uh, this beautiful floating image. Therefore, you need to stand in front of the um, actual device, about 30 degree field of view. You can also interact with this floating yeah. image. Actually, we have LED sensors here, and it creates an infrared wall of light. And we have an infrared camera here. And so when you put your finger into this wall of um, 
infrared light. We know where your finger is in space, and we map this finger space to the refracted light space. And this is how uh, you're able to interact with the floating image. It is the best image, and there is nothing here. There's, There's nothing, nothing there nothing. because of the refractable properties of the mirror. Oh, here you are. It really puts the image like in the air. Yes. yes. And this can be anything. This could be a phone or anything it else. It can be any light source. It can be anything you want. Okay. Exactly. And then this really caught my attention too. This, this power is a, button. The same principle. Uh, you can see the the sort of on off button. Uh -huh. And really at the bottom is a L, is LEDs arranged in this shape. And so that's the light source. And then on top is the mirror. And then uh, we have infrared sensors also detecting where the finger is with relation to the refracted light space. So you don't have to touch anything. And there's and nothing there. Control. Absolutely. Um, well, it keeps. It's going to keep switching off because it's detecting my hand. But, yep. but there is nothing yeah, there. Yeah. But really, we'd love for this technology to go into public spaces. So maybe a hospital, restaurant. Oh, we're hoping maybe it can go into automotive. Very simple example. It's uh, public toilet. It's kind of limitless. It's limitless. Yeah. It really is. You actually are selling the panels. Two hundred fifty U.S. dollars okay. for the actual panel. We also sell the SDK. The little green square is uh, where we want the user to touch. And then a uh, little red, red square is my finger. And so essentially in the SDK, you can put these green squares wherever you want on your image. Oh. And then that way, that's how you can make a panel. And the SDK can run on what? Well. Now we have it on Raspberry Pi. Okay. And But it can be anything. It could be your phone, it could be Android, it could be Linux. Piracy Here it innovation. Is. Piracy innovation. Science fiction dream to reality. Amen. <laughs> That's <it> true. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah. And there's the genius. He did it all. Wave. I just got a demo of this. This is Arcadio Gaming Haptic Feedback Chair. And it was really good. I can't remember how many motors he said it has in it. But there are a bunch in the back and in the seat. And I played a shooting game and I played a race car game. And it was pretty fun. Uh, they're going to hope to start selling them towards the end of 2020. The price will be about $800. Here's a kind of unique use for this computer vision. It's refereeing for sports. I'm telling you, that stuff's everywhere. Here's another unique use of computer vision. This one is detecting where your eyes are and where your finger is and what your finger's doing. I think you can do some gestures as well. He can sit in one spot, and with his finger, he can control a whole bunch of things. So by spinning his finger around, he's changing the light and the color of the light and turning it off and on. But when he points at the computer, he can play the movie or the music, change the song, and point at the speaker and turn the volume up or down Points at the light, turns it on and off. Points at the fan, turns it on and off. And this is all just sitting on the couch pointing at things. I guess he turned on the TV. Oh, he set the air conditioning temperature maybe. Looking at some pictures. That's crazy cool. And then, oh, I want to watch a movie. Not anything you're going to buy anytime soon, but maybe someday. I found a camera company that has a few things that I like. This is Amarillo, they're pretty new. They've got a couple things that I'm very interested in. This is a camera that screws into the light bulb. That's great, and they've got the same kind of thing that this one is uh, rated for outdoors. And these do have RTSP, so this will go into whatever uh, network storage you have. But then the big one that brought me over here was this biometric outdoor security camera. So tell us about that one. Yeah, certainly. So. Uh, this is our Athena camera. It's a CS Innovation Awards honoree in two categories this year. And um, what sets it apart from our other cameras is, uh, so all of our cameras are capable of biometric uh, image processing. Um, however, they use cloud-based analytics to do that. Um, so you'd need a monthly subscription plan. Um, all your other cameras. Yes, however, with Athena, uh, it's got a more advanced chipset and CPU, so it's able to do all of that uh, internally. Uh, so you don't need any subscription plan. It's all, all the biometric features are ready to go out of the box. Um, in addition, it's also got our patent pending voice print technology, um, which allows the camera to identify users by their unique vocal cadence. So it doesn't matter what you say, even if you have a cold, um, if you speak for five to six seconds after training to recognize your voice, it'll be able to uh, tell you apart. So when it recognizes your voice, so I say, hey, it's me or something, 
what can it do? It'll can it can it somehow interact with like your door lock or something, or what does it do? Yeah, so we're working on integration with other smart home technologies. Um, but currently, what it'll do is it'll uh, send a push notification directly to your phone or um, device, tablet, whatever you're using, um, showing you who it's picked up, the confidence level that it's picked up them on. Uh, and then it allows users to take action however they see fit. They can en enable two-way communication through the speaker and microphone. They can um, view the live footage to see what's going on. They can set off a sound and light alarm on the camera or call an emergency contact. Okay. And this is, you said Indiegogo and Kickstarter right yeah, now? Yeah, so it'll be available to the public in May of 2020. Uh, but we're doing crowdfunding on Indiegogo and Kickstarter. So if you're interested in pre-ordering it, there's some early bird discounts. Okay. Price range about? Oh, yeah. So uh, $299 US dollars. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, I like that. Yeah, I'm yeah. looking I'm forward glad. to I'm seeing glad. that one someday. I've got a whole lot of electronics project that I've put outside that did not belong outside. This stuff claims to be able to coat your electronic device and make it waterproof. So you buy this bottle of stuff, 200 bucks, you pour it in a vat, like something like that, you dip your board in there, leave it in there for, I don't remember whatever the instructions say, some period of time, and then you take it out, you have to blast it with a heat gun between like 80 and 150, I think, Celsius, he said, for two minutes, and then it's waterproof, and that's it. He says a bottle of this stuff, this size here, can do, what did you say, 500 of these? 800 of these, something like that? So 500 of these, and you don't spray it on, you don't paint it on, you dip it in and take it out, and then you pour back whatever you didn't use in the bottle so you didn't waste anything you didn't need. It just takes up whatever it needs on the board itself. So He says there's no problem with conduction on the board and no problem with heat dissipation on the board. Something like this would have probably saved me a lot of redos on some projects that I've put outside. Maybe someday I'll try it. Hopefully it'll work. A more computer vision. This one is using navigation. Basically, instead of using a 2D map, you can uh, use uh, the camera feed from the phone with this mounted on your dash and you get the uh, directions on the road that you're driving. That's great. I mean, it pops a big sign up that says turn left right yeah, there. Yeah, exactly. It's a much more uh, intuitive way to, uh, and easier to follow for uh, navigation sometime this year. Sometime 2020. Yeah. Okay, very cool. This thing makes a lot of sense. It's a body dryer. When you stand on it, it blows a bunch of hot air or you can select cold air if that's your thing but it will blow you dry from the bottom up. So no more worrying about whether you brought a towel to the bathroom or worrying about washing the towels or are you really as clean as you think because your towel's been there a week. So very cool idea. Starting in June, he says Amazon $200. I was just walking past another booth here. They've got pet feeders, a lot of pet feeders, smart pet feeders, some with cameras and speakers and you can talk to your pets and whatever, drinking fountains for the pets. But the one thing I think is still missing in this industry, something that's robotic that goes around after your pet and scoops up the poop. I have not seen that yet this year. Maybe if there was something like that, I'd get a dog. This booth, Water Gen, has a machine that condenses the water out of the air, cools it, and puts it in a drinking fountain. They've got little units like this one, or they've got big, huge ones that you pull behind a truck, like a size of a trailer. They've got sort of medium-sized units that they're showing as fitting like in a minivan or an RV. Seems like a great idea. I asked him about the power consumption. This little office-sized water cooler right here, to produce the water or extract it out of the air and to cool it is about 700 watts per hour. That's a lot. But if you could power it with solar, or in a situation like in a vehicle, where you're already generating rotation, you've got an alternator that's producing voltage, then it's a good idea. I don't think putting this in your office or in your home and running it at 700 watts an hour is going to be practical for most of us. But there are certainly some great uses. It's a good technology. Very cool. Well, that's it. Day four at CES. I found more fun stuff today than I expected to. We had a good time, saw a lot of good stuff. We'll be back next year. As always, thanks for watching. Until next time, adios. 
forgot about that. Go, go for it, go for hey, it. Hey, how's fan. it going? <laughs> hey, man, how are you? Good, good. J lines. Yeah. Hey, I'm still recording. I, 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 I remember your voice. I was like, wait, this some. This I guy know that guy. Familiar. How's it going? <laughs> so I went around. You know Rob? Uh, no. no. I don't. Oh, there you if you need help or want to chat with me or others who also enjoy projects like this, you can find us on Facebook and Discord. If you like what I'm doing and you want to support me, you can use my special product links in the video description or head over to Patreon or just like and share my videos. That's easy. If you like this video and you want to see more like it, this box will take you to a playlist of some of my favorites. In addition to videos like this, I also do live streams every Sunday. This box will take you to a recording of the latest live stream. That's all for now. Adios.